Hello, this is Mike at Game From Scratch, and welcome to our ongoing default game engine tutorial series. Um, ongoing is a bit of a bold word because we are just getting started, and that's exactly what this particular issue is about. Today we are talking about getting started with the default engine, specifically uh, downloading, creating a project, and opening it up. And that's about it. We're going to run our project, and we're going to go from there. So a very quick, straightforward topic for the most part. Now, if you've got deja vu about this, that's because I'm actually re-recording this. I did this once already, but unfortunately, Camtasia picked up my built-in mic as opposed to my good mic so the sound quality was atrocious so this is take two so don't worry you're not going insane uh, this is actually the second version of this tutorial I've published now like all parts of tutorials in this ongoing series there's going to be a text-based version on game from scratch so if you want a little bit more detail about what I talked about or you're looking for a reference that is available I will link it down below also I'm not going to go into a great deal of detail about what the default engine is I already did that once in this hands-on video. So if you want an idea of what the fold is before jumping in, be sure to check out this video. I will link it in the comments down below as well. Although we will go into a very brief overview of the fold. Now the fold is a 2D cross-platform, runs on um, Mac, Windows, and Linux for all the tooling and targets all of those plus iOS and Android. Um, mobile focused though, Lua powered game engine. It's completely free. It's made by King. Yes, that King. Um, and it's definitely something you should check out. It's a powerful engine and I hope you'll find that soon. Now there is one big caveat and you'll get it right away. You need to authenticate with um, the fold servers using a Google account. So that's how we get started actually. So that's the very next step. Um, come on here and either do a login or get the fold. If you haven't logged in yet, they're gonna both ultimately bring you to the same place. Uh, but you need to use, uh, I've already logged in. Let me go back one. You need to use a Google account to sign up. That's it for the sign up, but you need to authenticate with some kind of Google account. I think in this day and age, almost everybody has one, so it shouldn't be a huge deal breaker, but do be aware of that upfront. Also, if you want people to collaborate with you on your project, they are going to need to have a Google account as well. So basically they're using Google's OAuth servers for their authentication, and that's it. So it's not a, a strenuous sign up process by any means, but you do need to have this account to get going. And then once you've got it, you're gonna get a slightly different interface than I've got here because I've already signed up once. But here is the dashboard um, you will be brought to. When you do it yourself, you're gonna get a screen that looks a bit more like this. Uh, basically, just pick the platform for the tools you want and download. This will bring down a zip file containing all of the various pieces we need. Here is the zip file for the 32-bit Windows version extracted. And the big guy we want is this default executable. Now, of course, on Mac and on Linux, those guys are going to be a little bit different in look. Um, they're going to not have the .exe extension. You may have to schmod it to give it executable permissions. But otherwise, this process is exactly the same. That is the editor. Now, before we jump into the editor, though, we need to go ahead and create a project. Now, when you're working in default, at least by default, you're actually creating a Git project on their server. There is a way around this. I will get back to that in a little bit. For, for now, we're going to create a project on their server. Just come up here and click Add Project. And then here, name it. Give it a description, if you wish. And then you've got one of two choices. You can either have it create a mostly blank project or you can use one of their tutorials. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and create a blank project. But if you go ahead and say platformer, side scroller, or magic link, you get kind of the framework of one of those particular games. You get some a running code, um, game assets, etc. So if you're just playing around, you may actually wanna start with one of their tutorials. But for this series, we're going to start with a blank slate. So just click there and save. And our project is now created. Now, we're pretty much done with the dashboard if we want to be, uh, but I'm gonna show you a couple of things you can do here. First off, um, there's some analytics integration. So you can do things, you track how your players work, you can add analytics in it, et cetera, way beyond what we're gonna cover right now. So we'll just ignore that. Next up, you can come into your team setting. Now, as I mentioned earlier, if you wanna collaborate or you wanna give permissions to other people to check out your repository, your game, so you guys can work together, uh, you need to add them here. And again, they need to have a Google authenticated um, email address to participate. But that's it. That's the extent of adding a team member is right there. You just click it in that way. And then finally, we come back to our settings for our project. Here you can see there's where we named it. We can change the name. We can change the description. And then over here, we can go ahead and delete the project if we so wish. And that's it for the dashboard. Now, when you come back to the dashboard, you'll notice it's immediately available. Here, let me just go back to the root of that. 
So here is the dashboard homepage. Well, it automatically opens my first project. You see down here, your project is here. So if you've got multiple projects, they'll all be listed right here. And if you want to add an additional project, of course, you use add project here. Okay, so that is it. Our project is now created. We are good to go. If for some reason you need to come back and download the editor again, it is always available here via this download editor link. Again, just drop it down and pick your platform. And it brings down an archive containing all the files we need. Now back to that archive. And we're going to go ahead and run that executable. You will notice if you have ever used the Eclipse Java IDE that this looks awfully familiar. That's because they're actually basing it on Eclipse. Now, don't worry. I hate Eclipse, and I don't hate the fold, so don't let that turn you off. But it does give you all the customization you would expect from Eclipse. We can minimize, maximize each different panel. Uh, they can be dragged and dropped rearranged as desired, etc. So you've got good customizability with this editor. And to start with, it's kind of Spartan. So what we need to do now is bring in our project. This is actually what we're doing is checking out from their GitHub, uh, essentially. So we're bringing down a version of it. So just come in here to File and choose Open Project or press Control and O for the same result. Now you'll notice here, I am signed in. So you need to sign in, make sure that you're actually signed in with your Google account to their servers. Otherwise your projects are not going to be available. Now, the first time you run uh, the editor, you may have to do a sign in. I don't recall at this point. And sadly, I'm past that point now. So if you're not getting open projects, make sure that you are signed in using the same account that you signed up on the dashboard with. So now you'll see our um, project is showing here, which is great. Now go ahead, and since this is Git on the back end, we're essentially forking it. We're taking a branch and making a local sync of the, the code. So we need to go ahead and create a new branch. And we'll call this, I don't know, dev branch one. Really doesn't matter, but you just go ahead and name it. And then now it's created that new branch and press finish. And basically it's copied and it's now available for you. You look over here, you'll see, here is the general layout of your project. And they've set it up. There's a couple of folders going on and we'll get into a lot of this stuff in a lot more detail. So don't worry about it for now. But this is, think of main as, you know, the entry point of your game. Uh, collection is how things are organized inside of um, the default, uh, the default engine. Again, we'll get into that in more detail. You can see here, we've got an image, which is their logo file. And then we've got an atlas, which is a collection of images. In this case, it's only actually got one in it, and that is logo.png, as you can see right here. And then finally, we're gonna look at today is game.project. Now game.project is simply, let me just click that, open with text editor. And you'll see it's just a very simple config file. Nothing really special going on there, very simple to work with. Uh, but if you double click it, you actually get this nice editor over top of it. And as you can see here, most of your high level game stuff, um, like your game's title, its version, uh, the display resolution to run it, uh, do you, are you high DPI, your physics settings, your graphics settings, um, iOS specific settings, Android specific settings, OS X specific settings, Windows specific settings, HTML5 specific settings, etc., are all configured here. So you get this nice editor over top for setting up the global settings of your game. Now, they're not much to our game. Uh, technically, it consists of a drawing of a logo. So you can see here we got this guy, which is one sprite. Uh, which is using our logo.atlas. We're going to cover this stuff in more detail again, so don't worry about the specifics. But this is, in essence, uh, our game. It is a, so here you see the, the two different axes of our drawing, or sorry, of our, um, you know, Cartesian plan or our, our coordinate system. And you can see we've got this logo basically semi-centered. And that's it. That is our initial game we we're going to start with. And as I was opening these things, you'll notice it's all tabbed editing across the top. Now, another neat thing is see, I've got game project open. There's context sensitive help here at the top. So when I'm in collection, you can see that the help is here for how to navigate or move around the screen. And if you want to get rid of that, you can click X and it's gone. Um, and that's it. We've got our first project created. We, so you basically come in, you sign up, you use a Google account, you download the uh, specific editor, which is an archive. You extract that out somewhere. You run default.exe. You create a new project in the dashboard. Then you use file, open, project to bring it down locally. And here is the end result. Now, finally, once you've got your project up and go, we just want to go ahead and build or rebuild and launch. Now, you'll notice here we also got the option of building HTML here. And then down here, we can bundle. Now, bundling basically is when you turn it into 
uh, a form that is happy for various different platforms. So for example, you know, iOS, Android, OS X, Windows, Linux, and HTML5 applications all have their specific settings. Um, Mac has some additional signing issues. You may actually need Xcode in a Mac in order to do that particular bit. You know, don't blame default, blame uh, Apple on that one. Uh, but you know, there is additional settings involved in creating an Android APK um, or a bundle for iOS uh, or an HTML5 package, etc. So this is how you actually deploy your apps to various platforms, and it is dog simple. So for example, we're creating an HTML5 app. Uh, those are our two options. We can do it in release mode and click package, and it will ask us where to make it. And that's the, the extent of actually using HTML5. Now, each platform has a little bit different settings, obviously, as you go. But now we can go ahead and run our project. So just build and launch, and done. So there is your first ever application in the default engine. Very simple, very straightforward. Now I did mention earlier on that this whole Git repository issue is there. So really what's happening is your game is being created as a Git repository on default servers. Now obviously many people don't like this idea and I can understand why you would not want to host your code on someone else's servers. You've got a dependency on them being up um, at least to do new synchronizations or etc. You don't have to be online constantly because you are are doing a checkout to a local repository, but to sync it back up for multiple people to work together, you're dependent on default servers. And then of course, there's a trust issue there. So if you don't trust the default to have all your code, etc., then perhaps you don't want to use their servers. Fortunately, now this is an option. Now, if we go back to the text version, which again, I'm linking down below. So this is the text version of this particular tutorial. If you go to the very bottom, uh, da, 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 there we go. You will see here code hosted on default server deal breaker as the heading. Here is where there is a link and you just want to click that and this will bring you in to instructions on how to set up your own Git repository. And that's it. Uh, it's a bit of a process. Uh, if you've already worked with Git, it's going to be a no brainer here, but it is a process if you're completely new to Git. And if you've got no reason to do this, don't worry about it. You don't have to do this. But if you want to have your own code in your own repository and keep the fold out of it, no need for the dashboard, etc., this is the approach you have to take. So uh, I will link this down below as well, but it is also linked in the text-based version of this particular tutorial. And that's it. Hopefully the audio sounded good this time. I am not recording this again. Uh, in the next step, we'll move on and look a bit more at like, you know, those collections and how games are organized, etc. And then we'll get into the real meat of the default engine. So this is sort of the nuts and bolts getting up and going. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know now, uh, especially as the tutorial series goes forward. If there are specific details you want to see covered, do let me know. I hope you enjoyed that. Obviously, this tutorial is going to be ongoing. So if you do like it, please do click like and subscribe. There will be more coming, obviously, or it isn't much of a series. Also, I do all kinds of stuff here on Game From Scratch from news posts, other tutorials, reviews, etc. So hopefully uh, you like it here. You stick around and hit subscribe. All right. See you all later. Bye.